Hello everyone, uh, today we're going to be going over another example problem that pertains to utilizing the first law of thermodynamics. Now the problem that we're going to be solving is that we have a piston cylinder assembly fitted with a slowly rotating paddle wheel that contains 0.15 kilograms of air that's initially at 350 Kelvin. Now the air undergoes a constant pressure process to a final temperature of 450 Kelvin. Now during this process, we have energy that is gradually transferred to the air by heat transfer in the amount of 14 kilojoules. Now assuming that we have an ideal gas model with a uh, specific heat ratio K is equal to 1.4 and we can neglect changes in kinetic and potential energy for the air, we're being asked to determine the work done by the paddle wheel on the air. We're also being asked to, uh, to determine the work done by the air to displace the piston each in kilojoules. So um, as, I, as I normally do for these types of problems, I've already gone ahead and listed all of the knowns as well as the assumptions that, that, um, that are um, necessary for a particular problem here. And I've also gone ahead and written down the questions um, that the problem is asking us. So what is the work being done onto the piston and what is the work that the paddle wheel is doing onto the air within our cylinder? <laughs> So uh, with these particular problems, the first thing I like to do is just immediately write down the first law of thermodynamics. So the change in energy of our system is equal to, I'm just going to go ahead and expand this term, so the change in internal energy plus the change in our kinetic energy plus the change in our potential energy is equal to our net heat in minus our net work out. Okay, so in the problem statement, it was already told to us that we can neglect changes in kinetic and potential energy. So we can just go ahead and get rid of those uh, get rid of those terms. So that leaves us with that we have a change in internal energy is equal to our net heat in minus our net work out. Okay, so Looking at each of these terms in a little bit more detail, we have the change in our internal energy is equal to our net heat in. And we all we have is one form of heat that's actually coming into our system, which is just Q. We were told that in the problem statement. Now, our net work out is actually going to be the sum of the amount of, of work that our air within our cylinder is doing onto the piston as well as the um, amount of work that our paddle wheel is doing onto the air within our cylinder. So we have WP, so that's uh, work being done to the piston, plus work that the paddle wheel is doing onto our cylinder. And then the signs of each of these will indicate um, whether it's doing work onto the system or if the system is doing work onto it. Okay, so now what we can go ahead and do is since the work of the piston is going to be our boundary work, let's go ahead and solve for our paddle wheel work. So our work sub PW. So we have our change in internal energy is equal to Q minus WP minus W sub PW. And what we get is that W sub PW is equal to heat transfer minus W sub P minus our change in internal energy. Now, looking at this, we already know our heat transfer. It was told to us in our, in our particular problem, in the, in the problem statement, that is. And we know quite a bit about our change in energy term. So let's go ahead and, and just write that out. So we have work sub PW is equal to Q minus our boundary work minus, recall that we have, actually let me go ahead and write this up here, that the change in our internal energy is just going to be mass times our specific heat at constant volume delta T. So our times our change in temperature. Might be kind of hard to see there. 
So the change in our internal energy is equal to the mass, the amount of mass of air that we have in our cylinder times the specific heat at constant volume times our change in temperature, so T2 minus T1. So let's go ahead and plug that into our expression. And we have mass CV delta T. Okay, so here's our expression. And now the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to solve the first part of the problem in which we're going to solve for the amount of work that our air is doing onto the piston in order to, to lift it. So our W sub P. So what is W sub P? So we know our boundary work is just going to be the integral from between states 1 and state 2 of PDV. Now for this particular problem we have a constant pressure process and therefore we just have P times the difference in our volumes. Now unfortunately we haven't been told anything about our volumes but we have been told um, about our temperatures. We, all ha we have also been told that we can, uh, we can uh, go ahead and assume an ideal gas so we can use the ideal gas law to help us uh, derive an expression for our volumes. So our ideal gas is PV is equal to MRT. Now we can rewrite that and solve for volume. So we have volume is equal to MRT divided by pressure. Now taking this expression and plugging that back in for states 1 and state 2 for our volume, what we end up getting is that we have the work sub P is equal to our constant pressure times MRT2 divided by P minus MRT1 divided by P. Now, we have, since we have a constant pressure process, all of these uh, P's, the, the pressures, are all the same, and therefore we can just go ahead and cancel these terms out. The amount of mass that we have in our system is constant, and therefore we can pull that outside, and, there, and we can also uh, pull out our individual gas constant for air. And what that leaves us with is that we have MR times our temperature difference, T2 minus, oh, T2 minus T1. Okay, awesome. So we have just about everything that we need to know. Now recall that the individual gas constant, uh, individual gas constant is equal to our universal gas constant divided by the molecular weight of air. Now, um, if we go back to our knowns, these were actually given to us right here. So we know both of those, which is pretty nifty. So we can just go ahead and come down here and plug in those values. Actually, on second thought, let's, let's just go ahead and plug that directly into our expression. And then we can just calculate everything as a whole, and we can reduce um, round off error. So we get our work sub P is equal to our mass times our universal gas constant divided by the molecular weight of air times our temperature difference, T2 minus T1. Now the work of our, the work being done to our piston by the air in our cylinder is going to just be 0 0.15 kilograms times 8.314 kilojoules per kilomole in Kelvin divided by 28.97 kilograms per kilomole times our temperature difference which is just going to be 450 Kelvin minus 350 Kelvin 
Now if we take a look at units, what we're going to be left with, so kilomoles are going to cancel out, our kelvin are going to cancel out, and our kilograms are going to be uh, cancel out, and all we're left with is kilojoule. So this tells us that our that the amount of work being done onto the piston by the air is 4.3 kilojoules. Now note that we have a positive work here, and therefore our system is doing work onto the piston, which is exactly what we, we uh, physically interpret this problem as being the correct physics. Okay, so now we already, now we know that. Now for our step three, we have to find our um, specific heat at constant volume. So we know that Cv is equal to R divided by K minus one. Now I, I, the reason I ended up picking this particular expression is because in our knowns, we were given the specific heat ratio K. And using this, we can go ahead and solve for our specific heat at constant volume. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and plug in uh, the expression that we already defined for individual gas constant for air, so R bar divided by the molecular weight of air times 1 divided by K minus 1. Now if we go ahead and plug in all of our values, so we get 8.5. 314 kilojoules per kilomole and kelvin divided by 28.97 kilograms per kilomole times 1 divided by 1.4 minus 1. Now if we go ahead and look at units, we'll end up getting, so our kilomoles will cancel out, and it will be replaced by kilograms, so we'll get kilojoules per kilogram in Kelvin for our units for our specific heat at constant volume. And we get 0 0.717 kilojoules per kilogram in Kelvin. Okay, awesome. So we know our CV, so our specific heat at constant volume, we know the amount of work that's being done by our air onto the piston, and we also know the heat transfer. So now all we have to do is plug all of these back in to our original expression in step one, and we will find the amount of work that the paddle wheel is doing onto the air within our piston cylinder. So work of our paddle wheel is equal to Q minus MCV T2 minus T1 minus work of our piston. So what we get is, and let me just rewrite this so it's a little bit less messy. So work sub PW is equal to our 14 kilojoules minus 0 0.15 kilograms times 0 0.717 kilojoules per kilogram in Kelvin times our temperature difference, so 450 Kelvin minus 350 Kelvin minus our work being done to the piston, which is 4.3 kilojoules. Now looking back here at our central term, so for our change in internal energy, our kilograms and our kelvin will cancel out, which just leaves us with kilojoules, which matches the units for the, re uh, for the rest of our expression. Now plugging this all in, we end up getting that the work that our paddle wheel is doing onto the air within our piston cylinder is minus 1.06 kilojoules where the negative sign again indicates that our system is having work being done to it, which again matches the, the physics and what we expect with this particular problem. So here we've, are, we've gone ahead and solved for the uh, work that our air is being 
uh, the work that our air is doing onto the piston. And we've also found the amount of work that the, the paddle wheel within our piston cylinder is doing onto the air within our piston cylinder assembly. So we've gone ahead and solved uh, both of our uh, both of the unknowns that we were asked to solve for this particular problem. So um, if you have any questions or concerns regarding this problem, uh, please leave a comment below and I'll respond to them as quickly as possible. Um, I hope this was a helpful example problem. And uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.